Hey guys, so it's Anna again. And today I am going to talk again about eating kosher, family struggles. Um, so yeah, first I am almost at my fourth week and uh, six days away from completing my first month kosher. Just quite, uh, you know, it's a great feeling. I was so scared of starting. Actually, I even made the goal only to be completely kosher by September. Actually, I'm not kosher because uh, there is no such thing as kosher food that is not prepared by Jews. So, regardless of what I eat, even if I follow kosher rules, um, it's not kosher. It's kosherish. I'll call it kosherish. <sighs> Today I'm going to talk mainly about the struggles with family. Family hasn't been so understanding about uh, religion. What's this? Hang on. No, it wasn't my phone. Huh, I heard something though. So yes, uh, it's it's not easy. My family is Catholic, although my father doesn't practice and uh, has his own set of superstitions. And uh, you know, there are some superstitions in my family that actually make me believe that we may have Jewish origins. <laughs> But uh, either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, they they were heavily indoctrinated, and there is a lot of misinformation. My father, uh, my my brother, kind of convinced my father that I'm joining uh, Islam, and uh, no matter what or I try to explain, it's Judaism. It's not Islam. Uh, it doesn't sink in. Uh, my mother. My mother gives me aneurysms. Literally. She either is super ecstatic or she goes full anti-Semite on me. <laughs> it's, uh, she still hopes that I will <laughs> devolve to Catholicism. She... she I told the story about how she believes that I converted because she prayed for me to convert. And of course, if uh, she prayed to God and God made me a Jew, this should tell her what the true religion is, but it doesn't matter. She is still trying to convince me to pray to, to, to saints, to, to Jesus, to the Virgin of uh, had sex and got pregnant and uh, 2,000 years people had to pay for that and uh, promote fake, fake chastity even after marriage and stuff like that. So it's a little challenging. She still hopes that I'll go Catholic because she just thinks, you know, now she believes in God. She's only a step away of becoming a Catholic, but that's not going to happen. And so, at times, she's very supportive of my choice to be Jewish, and um, other times she'll go on full anti-Semite on me. <laughs> and that's not like, yeah, the other day when I visited her, she had sausages, pork, gelatin, a lot of stuff that Jews cannot eat, and um, she was really upset that I didn't want to eat. Um, my father is doing everything he can to boycott my kosher, kosherish diet. Uh, he just, um, you know, he has. It's like I used to eat bacon, and I love the bacon. And uh, he used to hide the bacon so that my brother and I wouldn't see the bacon and wouldn't eat it. So now 
what he's doing is he buys a lot of bacon, has the fridge full, packed full of bacon, presunto, chorizo, all those uh, pork meat preserves to try to tempt me to have any. And he hides the cheese. Now he hides the cheese so that I will go for the pork. And he is very frustrated because I don't touch it. I go there, I would rather not eat than eat pork. And he is very offended. So every day it's a new struggle, a new fight. Uh, he doesn't accept. He's not at all acceptant. He treats me not even going to say it's just it's painful you know there is I have no one supporting me I'm basically alone I have everyone trying to boycott doing their best to boycott me and today I came home of course there was another fight my father had prepared a uh, rabbit too, and uh, of course it has chorizo, it has uh, that large part of the pork, you know, the same part you used to make bacon, but fresh. It had uh, lots of things that I am not allowed to eat, that I'm not permitted to eat. Well, technically I am, but it goes against my beliefs, and... Um, was hard. Uh, he had friends there, his friends. I just, I didn't even say that I wouldn't eat that. I just said, you know, I already had food. Uh, I'm not hungry. Um, I'm just tired. I want to go home and I want to go, you know, too bad to sleep uh, because tomorrow I have classes and, uh, you know, I get tired and so I eat at school, and uh, he he said he he saw, you know, he went through my trash bag, and he saw the, the he saw the cans from tuna and uh, the chickpeas, and he knows that I'm eating that instead of eating the food that he buys and wants me to cook. <sighs> So, yeah, it was a huge fight because uh, I don't eat the meat that he wants me to eat. And there's a thing, in this house, uh, it's always been a, a huge meat, uh, protein stuff. Uh, so, uh, most food is either pasta uh, potatoes, there, there, there is barely any vegetables, uh, legumes, it's really rare that you have that here. Uh, there is rarely any fruit, if I want fruit I will have to buy it myself. There is, n there is not a, um, a fair amount of uh, healthy stuff. And uh, even in terms of, of food, it's most mostly food preserves, stuff like that. You know, stuff that you shouldn't. You know, I'm going home, I'm not hungry. Um, he's also hang angry because I spend the weekends, you know, I don't go there to eat with them. I used to go, but I don't. Uh, it's not easy, it's not easy. It's not easy. But then again, I have uh, my challenges and... Uh, it's already hard enough without people trying to, to make you stray from your path. You know, it's, it's, can you imagine, you know, trying to 
get closer to God, get, uh, you know, learn the Torah. And uh, there's no place you can turn to. You have to do it all by yourself. Now, imagine all that plus everyone opposing you, opposing your wishes, disrespecting your free will, disrespecting your beliefs. You were forced your entire life to go to church to respect their beliefs, even though it was ridicule. Come on, how, how come? How can the Virgin Mary be a virgin if she had Jesus and uh, 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 I don't know how many other kids? How can you believe in a lot of nonsense that the Catholics? Uh, believe in and it's not i think they should have seen the, it coming they should have seen it coming that i'd become jewish well probably not because i became agnostic atheist first but they should have seen it coming that if i started believing in god again that i'd be jewish not christian <laughs> okay hang on i'm just uh, going to the ladies room i'll be back Hey again, so I'm back from my toilet, and uh, so yeah, as I was saying, it is quite hard. My family isn't supportive, and I'm sorry, the glare, I'm trying to, it's really hard, but uh, there was uh, an incident between my family, and most of my furniture is damaged. <laughs> Because my family is a little, shall we say, um, angry. Uh, so yes, uh, basically this is the only place I have to sit on, so bear with me. Uh, so as I was saying, it is quite hard and they should have seen it coming that uh, I'd become Jewish if I ever reconnected to God. I mean, when I was a kid, um, I, you know, what you call Sunday school in the United States, uh, I'd go there and uh, my katkishta, they'd teach us things and I'd question it. I, I was uh, always more into the Old Testament than the New Testament. I hated the Pauline letters. I hate it to this day. I hate it to this day. And I don't believe in any of that. So, but I think um, what triggered my uh, descent from Christianity the most was... Uh, was uh, my fight about uh, Easter and Passover uh, because uh, of course uh, everyone kind of sees movies and uh, we all learn about how Jews uh, escaped from Egypt uh, you know the covenant with God and the significance of eating lamb for Easter and uh, all the significance behind Passover. Uh, now, uh, the thing that I had, that, that was my biggest problem with it, was that, of course, you learn about these things and uh, you learn... Uh, uh, Gosh, this is, uh, there are two main parts of the Bible that really resonate with me, which is the scroll of Esther, which is my favorite, favorite story from the Bible. Don't, I don't know why, it, it's always been, and uh, probably my Jewish name will be either Esther or Hadassah, or both, I don't know, because... Uh, that's truly, I truly admire Queen Esther, and that's it's probably the reason why I identify with Judaism so much. And um, and then the other story is how 
you know, the escape from Egypt, literally, it's uh, it's a foundational, well, not a foundational myth, but, but it's the single most, I don't know if for other Jews it is, but to me, it is the single most important thing in Jewish identity. And uh, it was always, even before I knew what being Jewish was, it was such an important thing that uh, I'd uh, have some arguments with my Katkishta about it because, uh, you know, you learn how beautiful the story is, how God talked and uh, said to Moses and taught him how he would rescue the the Jewish people from Egypt and uh, you learn so many things you learn such a beautiful story and you learn how they should kill lambs and mark the doors to protect the firstborn from uh, the curse sent uh, you know to free um, you know, to punish those that wouldn't follow God's commandments and uh, f protect the Jewish people. There is such an importance in the symbolism of the lamp. And um, later, when we learn about Easter, the, the Christian version of it, uh, and that's why... I really stopped going to Sunday school most of the time. Actually, it was on Saturday, but uh, you know the name you give it. It's the same thing. You learn Catholicism through that. Um, on Sundays, you, you'd go to church. On Saturdays, you'd go to what you call Sunday school. We call it Katkez. <sighs> and again, we learn... About Jesus, we learn that there the um, the resurrection nonsense, the, the the whole Easter nonsense thing, and then the Katkishta starts calling him Lamb of God, all that nonsense, and that we eat lamb for Easter because of Jesus. Okay, you can't imagine me going all crazy over that. Because to me, that was a corruption of Passover. And I didn't know the name Passover. To me, it was Pasqua, which is actually sim similar to the Hebrew word uh, for Passover. But uh, in Portuguese, the Portuguese call it uh, almost the same thing as uh, Passover in, uh, in, um, in Hebrew. Uh, I'm not pronouncing it because I'm afraid to butcher Hebrew, so I'm sorry. And uh, so to me, it was really, really offensive that they would call Jesus the Lamb of God, the, you know, the sacrifice of Easter to save and redeem our sins. When in, in first, in the Bible, no one can redeem anyone else from their sins, but also... It is a huge, huge misrepresentation of the significance of Passover. And to me, it's, it's always been one of my main, the, one of the main foods I had with Catholicism and probably Christianity as a whole. I understand a lot about um, other Christian denominations, but I know this much and uh, the other thing is in the bible it says that of course people to be you know the whole question about uh, priesthood and uh, that nonsense and uh, to me i believe that to talk to god you, why do why can't you talk to God? If why is a priest uh, forgiving your sins in the name of God? Who is that priest? If 
priest can a priest can talk to God, why can't you? That was all, all another of my main problems. Then the prayers had no meaning. The saint dead worshipping, the, the statue worshipping. Because, you know, you learn the commandments, you learn all this, but then you're told to ignore it. You're told that, no, none of what they're doing is actually violating the commandments. And to me, those things never, never, never got into my mind. So, <laughs> really, I was Jewish all along. I just didn't know the name for it. And that, that that's the thing. Why didn't my mother see it coming? How strange is it, is it, it is for her when she knew all along my, my problems with Christianity, my problems with Catholicism and the, the questions I would put uh, in Sunday school. <sighs> I don't know. It's it's just a little overwhelming to me because they, they, they should have seen it coming. They should have seen it coming. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so now I am going to give you some recommendations if you're trying to keep kosher. Because I know these things may not, uh, in, a, in, a, in my country, it's impossible uh, for the most part. Uh, but uh, then again, things I do, and uh, for instance, I avoid buying all kinds of meat uh, unless I get into a financial position enough that I can... Oh, gosh, but still, meats that are not slaughtered by Jews are not kosher, even if they are permitted. Uh, then you also have the fact that if you go to a butcher, they will probably use the same knives, the same surfaces to, to, to cut the, the, the meats that they use to cut pork and all other forbidden stuff. So either you get your permitted meats from um, a producer that only produces kosher animals, well, not kosher meat, because if it's not uh, overseen by a rabbi, it's not kosher. But um, again, only kosher animals. Uh, you need to make sure that you buy pre-packaged food uh, packaged by a company that only produces uh, kosher animals. Uh, which bring us, brings us to fish. Um, if you go to buy fish, now while fish can be kosher, uh, there is again the contamination problem. And uh, there, there's another advice I want to give you because... The, the fish that you're buying and you think is fresh is actually unfrozen and then you're going to fro freeze it again. So you're better off buying prepackaged fish that was frozen in IC uh, and uh, there is no risk of contamination by seafood and other non-kosher animals and clams and stuff. Because usually, for instance, I love salmon, and the the fisher companies that produce salmon are not going to be packaging it in the same, uh, you know, handling. Because uh, you know, I fish that is uh, that is captured in I C is immediately frozen and uh, processed on sh factory ships. Whereas um, if you buy it from uh, the fish uh, shop or the fish area in your supermarket, that fish is going to be processed in the area with contamination from seafood, from all that things, things that you can eat. So. If you're going to eat by prepackaged uh, animal products, um, 
and stay uh, pescatarian as much as possible, which is the closest you'll ever get to eat kosher. Of course, as a non-Jew, you can't eat kosher because you yourself are not Jewish, so the food that you produce is not kosher. But you can follow kosher guidelines, and that's uh, why what I'm trying to do as much as possible. Another thing, beware of <laughs> ingredients. There are some foods, and I, I talked about this in the other video, that may appear kosher and are not kosher. And uh, this is also valid for medication. A lot of medication comes in capsules that have gelatin in it. And yes, there may be kosher gelatin, but you don't know what kind of gelatin is used. So better choose um, pills that don't have gelatin uh, wrapped things. And uh, again, packaging is always essential. I always avoid things that say may contain trace amounts of whatever, even if the ingredients of the thing that I am buying do not contain non-kosher stuff. If there is a risk of cross-contamination, I avoid it altogether. Read the packaging, you know, certain things. And uh, for instance, you have the turkey ham, that which could be an alternative to um, pork preserves and stuff like that, but it has lactose in it, lactose in it, and you cannot mix dairy and meats. So again, this is another thing that is forbidden to you because it appears that it is only meat but it has forbidden ingredients and you need to be careful and mindful of your diet and what you eat. Another thing that you should, uh, what I was going to say, dairy. A good alternative, and you know the reason why you like bacon is because of the smoked flavor. It's not because it is good, it is appetizing. So a good alternative, and it's I actually prefer it, is smoked salmon. It's delicious, it is permitted, and it is accepted as kosher. So you have alternatives. There aren't many, especially in a country like mine, but you have alternatives, and it's quite feasible, and um, yes... So that you believe it, I didn't, uh, I was afraid and I, I didn't intend to go full kosher before September. Because uh, I, I thought, you know what, I, I am, um, I want to enjoy the foods that I like because after I convert, I won't be able to eat them ever, ever again. But the thing is, once I started eating kosher, I didn't want any of those disgusting fruits in my body, even though I know I like them, something in my mind is rejecting them. And uh, so, and I don't even want to try and eat them again because at this moment, mentally, I'm rejecting them. I'm not being tempted. Uh, so I think it, it is a good thing that my brain is rejecting them. Psychologically, I feel disgusted at the idea of eating it. I feel like I'm going against God. I'm going against, you know. So it's uh, psychologically, I'm stronger than I thought I would be. And uh, I think it's a good thing. And I, I'm going to keep like this. Uh, I'm excited because uh, next month I'm moving into a rental place, you know, a rent, a rent room. And so I'll become Shomer Shabbos. I know that as a, a Gentile, I have to break Shabbos by switching the light on or something like that. I think in my first Shabbos, I'm going to actually do that by recording my first candle lighting and stuff like this because it's an emotional thing and uh, I want to keep uh, 
record of it. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it is challenging and it's exciting at the same time. I don't know. Oh, and I also, also, I think that um, I've talked to a Jewish friend and uh, he says that, and actually before I became Jewish, he was, he, he, he always had the feeling that I was Jewish. There was a, a lost spark and he, he said he wondered what would happen to me if I started eating kosher and the effect it had on me. I still don't know the full repercussions, but I lost a lot of weight and I've been eating more than ever. Um, it's given me a lot of clarity and I changed a lot. And even my menses changed a little bit. I'm healthier now. So it's curious. And I think it's sad. he said that he, if I was indeed Jewish, uh, of course, uh, there is no way to assess that that uh, eating kosher would have an impact on my diet and uh, on my body, on my spirit, on my soul. And I think it has, it has. I've been reacting very well to it. Actually, there's another thing I need to tell you. Um, after I made the resolution that I wanted to go kosher, and I promised God that I, that goat kosher. Uh, it was around Christmas and New Year, and uh, my father bought Leitown, which is baby piglet. You know, because the saws have lots of piglets, more than they can feed. So they allow them to grow a little bit, and then they weed out some so that they don't burden the saw with so many piglets and uh, there is a special dish with it and uh, I remember wishing you know I wish I had some food allergy that I I could just say I don't eat that uh, you know because I didn't want to disappoint my family but at the time I didn't want to come out as Jewish because I didn't want to create conflicts and uh, I never told anyone they just found out and uh, have been acting irrationally about it since. But yes, at the time I was disgusted and I, I still thought, you know what, I'm doing this for the sake of, you know, good and family environment. I ate it. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's quite interesting that I felt sick and literally sick both times, both both on New Year's Eve and both on Christmas, I got stomach stomach cramps. I got really really sick from eating it, uh, and I've never eaten pork since. Uh, so I think that if I were to eat something non-kosher now, non-kosher, no. You know, not permitted now, I'd probably get sick. So uh, it is quite interesting the, the effect of, I don't know if, well, it's not exactly a psychological uh, effect because uh, ooh, let's say that what happened in the bathroom wasn't pretty and I was cramping really badly. And uh, so, yeah. Um, I think there is some effect on uh, the fact that I made that promise actually made something switch in my body that makes me reject that food. Uh, so yes, and I don't want to test the... Sorry. And I don't want to test that theory. I am good. <laughs> I am very happy of my progress and I don't want to undermine it for whatever reason. So have a great afternoon, uh, good luck, and please do tell me your experiences. Bye-bye.